All right, in this lecture, we're gonna go ahead and do one more example of using form to draw out the base of our drawings. So what we're gonna be drawing in this lecture is a landscape and it's going to have mountains and trees and we wanna break those down into simple geometric forms. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna decide where my horizon line is. Now a horizon line is just the line between the sky and the earth. So that's gonna be my horizon line right there. Next, I need to decide where I want my mountains. So I'm going to make my mountains sort of pyramid shapes. So I'm gonna make one right about here so and then I'll put a second one right next to it just like so and then I'm gonna put a shape over here that sort of connects into this shape and it'll sort of sort of be a rounded cube type of a shape so there's this top surface right there and then I'm going to add another surface behind this mountain so you get a view of that plane right there all right, cool. Now let's go ahead and add the foreground. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line right about here to represent my foreground. And it might actually slope up a little bit on this side. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add another mountain over here. So go ahead and draw on a second pyramid, just like so. All right, perfect. So now we have the basic setup for our landscape drawing. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna start adding in that detail. So first off, I'm gonna decide where my light source is coming from. So I wanna put my light source coming from up here down in this direction. So it's gonna be hitting this surface and this surface as my highlights. So I'm gonna leave those bright white and then I'm gonna go ahead and shade in these side areas with my midtone. And in this case, both of these are going to be my highlighted areas. Same with this background one. And then with this one, I can go ahead and shade this side with my midtone. And then also, let's go ahead and add a tree in here. So I think I want to add my tree in right here. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a cylinder like so. And then I'm going to draw a sphere on top of that to represent the leaves of my tree. And then I can go ahead and shade that in. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and work on the reflection of my mountains. So this area right here is going to be a lake. So I wanna create a reflection of these forms. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just copy them, but flip them upside down. So I'll have that line going from there to there. And then this line would connect back here. So I'll have it coming from there to there. And this one would come down to about there. So I'll have this one coming from there to there, like so. And then I can go ahead and draw this one. I should have drawn this one first so it was in front of that other one. So there we go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and shade in this area because you'll be able to see that visually um, behind this reflection of the mountain. All right, perfect. So now we can go ahead and start adding in some detail. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna start adding some more detail to these mountains. So I might add some more rigidy edges to my mountains. Same with on this one. Might even come more out like so. And this guy might get some more ridges. This guy might be reshaped a little bit. And this guy will definitely get some reshaping. All right, perfect. Now let's go ahead and switch over to our dark pencil. And now we can go ahead and start adding in some real detail. So starting with my background mountain, I'm gonna start with this guy. So first, I just wanna draw out the outline of my mountain. And as we get down here to the bottom, it's not just going to be a straight line. There's gonna be a little bit more of a shape to the bottom here. And then this edge right here of the mountain is also not going to be a straight line. It'll be some more to that shape than just that straight line. So it might be a little bit more bent and skewonkous. And then we can go ahead and shade in that area. And we'll come back and add a little bit more 
detail to this texturing on our mountain so it's not just one solid form with two planes. Then let's go ahead and move on to our next mountain. So we'll draw out the contouring lines of this mountain. can draw this edge in. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and create that bottom line of our mountain like so. And then we can go ahead and add in our shading on this side. All right, perfect. Now let's move on to this back area. So I'm going to draw this a little bit lighter just because the further away things get, in real life, the lighter they become. So I don't want that line to be too dark. And then I'll move on to this guy up here. So this guy needs to be a lot more of a organic shape. Otherwise, it's just going to look like a big lumpy hill. So I want to go ahead and sort of add in some rocky sort of a shape to that. All right, perfect. Now let's go ahead and add in our other mountain over here. So I'll draw this contouring line. And we'll add this edge right here. And then we want to add this edge of our foreground. And I think I want it to be made out of grass. So I'm going to go ahead and add in sort of a grassy line to that. All right, perfect. Now let's move on to this tree. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the trunk of the tree. So we have a basic cylinder here, but we can go ahead and add some roots to that to make it look a lot more realistic. And then I'm going to go ahead and add my leaves in. So my leaves are just going to be one big basic sort of a geometrical form but a little bit more organic. But I don't want to do every individual leaf because that will take too long. So there's my tree. Now let's go ahead and add in this contouring line on this mountain. So I'm going to go ahead and shade that in. And then let's go ahead and add some shading on this tree. So since the light source is coming down from here, we're going to get some cast shadow, or not cast shadow, we're going to get some mid-tone colors on this side. So let's go ahead and shade that in. And as this tree curves around, we're going to see just a little bit of that core shadow. So I'm going to really darken some of these edges over here on this side. Next, let's go ahead and decide where our cast shadows are going to be. So if the light is coming from this side, first off, there's going to be a cast shadow being cast by this bulk of the leaves onto our trunk. So let's go ahead and add that in. So it's probably going to be cast down to about there, like so. 
And then the whole tree itself is going to be casting a cast shadow off in this direction. So let's go ahead and add that in. So basically we just want to draw the tree shape coming off in this direction. Just like so. And then we can go ahead and fill that in with our cast shadow value. Then next, let's move on to the trunk. So if the light is coming from this side, we're gonna get our core shadow on this side of the trunk. And that's gonna slowly fade into our midtone and then into our highlight because it's a cylindrical type of shape. We'll get a little bit of shadow on this side of that root. All right, perfect. Next, let's go ahead and move on to this mountain and add some more detail to it. So if the light is coming from up here at the top, we might have some undercuts in our mountain. So for example, right about here, we might have a little bit darker of a shadow. And that'll just start creating more of an interesting form for us in our rocky mountain. Same with over here. And then over here on this side, we might have some midtones creating the same thing that we have over here. So we might have a couple of undercuts. And then let's go ahead and move on to these mountains. I'm going to grab a piece of paper to lay on top of this so that as I'm drawing, I don't smudge it. So this is a really good trick to know is that if you don't want to smudge your drawings, make sure you lay a piece of paper down or a paper towel for your hand to rest on. So let's go ahead and get started with this mountain. So we might have a few undercuts in here, maybe a few small holes. And then as this mountain sort of curves around, it's gonna get a little tiny bit of that core shadow on that edge. We can also sort of fade this midtone into this area. Let's move on to this mountain. Then we can move on to this guy back here. And he's gonna have very light detail because he's so far away. So like I said, the further something is away, the lighter it's going to be. So my that should work. And then we can move on to this rocky plane right here. And so the light is coming from this side, but we still might be getting some shadows on the other side of let's say some of these rocks. So if there's a rock right here, we're probably gonna be getting a cast shadow on this side of that rock. So we can just add in some stuff like that. Now I'm not looking at any reference for this drawing. I'm just drawing it out of my head. But if you were to be drawing a landscape like this, let's say for a fantasy comic book or something, you'd really want to look at some reference so that you can really understand how rocks work. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes to show you how to create form and highlights and shadows in a landscape by using geometrical shapes. 
So for now, this will work fine. And then as this piece curves around, we're going to start seeing more of that mid-tone shadow. Alright, cool. Now lastly, I'm going to go ahead and add in this reflection. So I just want to copy the same shape that I've created here. Whoops. I just realized that I accidentally drew over this mountain, so we want to make sure we erase that because we don't want to see that part of it. We want this mountain to be coming in front, like so. We want to leave that out. Then we can go ahead and copy these reflections over. And then just to differentiate the difference between our highlight and our shadow, I'm going to go ahead and add a dark edge along the bottom of our mountain. So I'm going to add it in just right there. And I'm going to add that all the way along the bottom. And that's going to allow us to see the difference between our reflection and the actual mountain itself. All right. I think this looks pretty good. Now it could be a lot better and look way more realistic, but like I said, I just wanted to demonstrate to you how to take geometrical three-dimensional forms and use those to block out your images, your landscapes, your characters, whatever it might be, and then build on top of that. That brings us to the end of this lecture. So your assignment for this lecture is to go outside and look at the landscape around you, whether you're in a city or you're in the mountains. And I want you to go ahead and draw what you see, except I want you to draw it out of geometrical forms. And then I don't want you to add any detail to it. Just draw the geometrical forms and that's it. Thanks for watching this lecture and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.